Hello everyone, we have another game, classical game coming, it's against Mr. Kiyak, I, I hope I pronounced it right, we have a Sicilian defense here, and actually I wanted to try out one particular Sicilian line that I've never played in my life, I wanted to see how this will work out. So I'll play knight f6 here, and I'll play knight c6 here. So at my lifetime I usually prefer the move a6 here, which is the knight of defense. This is called the classical Sicilian. Okay, so he played bishop e2. Now I have a nice choice between e5 and e6. It's very much dependent on where I want my pawns to be. I kind of like the move e6. Let's do e let's do e6. See where this takes us. This is the so-called Scheveningen, or uh, I think the Dutch people actually pronounce it Scheveningen, Sicilian. We see that Black has these two pawns on d6 on e6, which might look very innocent in a way, but they have a lot of potential to advance forward at any given point to create some counterplay. This was um, the weapon of choice of uh, Gary Kasparov actually in uh, one of his matches against uh, Anatoly Karpov. Where he actually won I think one particularly important game as black in this line thanks to the uh, very deep preparations that Kasparov is always uh, having. So he played the move bishop f3. That's the possible move but you might see that it's no longer protecting the square on c4. This means that the move knight a5 followed by knight c4 is a very tempting options, uh, option. I'm slightly worried about the option of knight b5 though, so I will put this little a6 move just to control this square. It's also a useful move in general. At some point in the game I might push my pawn to b5 to create some counterplay there on the queen side. Many times white will try to play very aggressively with pushing his pawns on the king side with the move like g4. But he decided to play a4 at the moment, stopping the move b5. And I think now would be an opportune moment to play knight a5. We'll see how will he react to it. So this is a very nice square for the knight in general. Hitting both the bishop and the weak pawn on b2. He cannot play b3 so easily. He just plays king h1. Which, uh, which is a useful move in general in those type of types of position getting the king out of the danger diagonal. But I'm not sure if here specifically this move is concrete enough. So I will play knight c4. He'll play bishop c1 probably because I just don't see any other way to protect the bishop and the pawn. Yeah, and now I think it's time to try and solve my my problem of the undeveloped bishop on c8. So the move e5 appeals to me very much seems like a very concrete move. Let's play e5. Um, I kinda like it. Getting ready to develop the bishop. If white takes on e5, I, I can actually consider I can consider both captures. But he played I think a better move, trying to keep the pressure. Knight e2. So his next move is probably going to be something like b3, trying to chase away the knight from its um, from its active square. I can try harassing a bit his his um, his position with a move like queen b6, trying to get the knight e3 there, but he can simply play queen d3 at any point. So. I don't see too much um, too much point in this. I can play a move like bishop e6, trying to provoke him to play f5. 
not necessarily a move that it doesn't want to do, so... I'm not sure I will do this. Another option would be to take on f4 actually, and to prepare a retreat square for my knight. This actually makes some sense, but the only drawback that he will take back with the knight and he will get an access to the d5 square, so I'm not 100% sure about it. I think I will do it though, let's take on f4. And after he takes with the knight I will play the move bishop e6, covering the square on d5. He plays b3, I'm actually very much surprised by it because uh, I can play knight e5 as planned, but I have another extra option of playing knight to e3, which is a move that I didn't kind of supposed to have. And I will get the bishop spare advantage this way. Now let's play knight e3. He has to take it because it was a double attack. Now he will need to spend some time regaining the pawn on e3. So one thing I can do is to play a move like queen c5, trying to hold on to the pawn. This pawn will most likely fall at some point, but once again I, uh, I don't worry about this too much because this is an extra pawn. So queen c5 is one option. Another option would be just to develop the bishop, trying to get my remaining pieces into the game. And I have a third option, which is actually quite interesting one, is to push the pawn on d5. To, to be able to play the move bishop c5 later on, and to protect the pawn on e3. Because if I, if I manage to maintain the pawn on e3 without any troubles, it, it could actually be a very annoying pawn for him to to deal with. So that's an interesting option, which is quite a sharp one, so it's something that must be considered very carefully. I kind of like the move queen c5 actually, because it's really not easy not so easy for him to to regain the pawn actually he, he now either has to retreat his knight to a very unfortunate square on d1 or play a move like knight d4 i think neither of them is is not really a move that white is too happy uh, making I'm a bit low on time though, talking and explaining too much, I kind of um, always tend to get myself into a certain uh, time trouble. So he preferred the move knight to f4, once again this makes a lot of sense, but now my planned move is bishop e6. I'm allowing the knight to capture my bishop, but I, I do not worry about this all that much. It it actually might be only good for me to bring my pawn to e6, which will cover all of the important squares in the center. And I'm get re getting ready to develop my rook into this very nice uh, square on c8. You will see that there is a lot of pressure on the c-file. Knight d5. Still. Well... I'm actually once again quite surprised by this move because he cannot maintain a piece on the d5 square, I will take it. I didn't want to take it with the knight because then he will have a tempo against my bishop. He will probably take with the pawn at this point. But this is opening up the e-file, which means that I could play on the next move rook e8 and moving my bishop somewhere and I think I will be able to hold on to this pawn, surprisingly enough, let's play rook e8, that's a very nice move to make. And now whenever he comes on e1 and trying to pick up my pawn, I can simply move my bishop to d8 or f8. I'm not even sure which one of these uh, is better, but now for sure he will have 
very very hard times regaining the pawn. So bishop d8 or bishop f8. My intuition says that both of them should be should be good. There are some good points for each of them. Bishop d8 kind of disconnects the rook but is getting ready to activate the bishop, while bishop f8 is kind of safer because it protects the king. But at this point I don't see too much importance uh, for the king's safety because there are no attacks coming, so I'll choose bishop d8. And my bishop can go to b6 as well as a5 at any given point. So I think this pawn on e3 is is there to stay. I really don't see how can black uh, can white regain it at least not easily. And this pawn might be a game changer. It's a, it's a passed pawn. It's protected, it's very far advanced. And this is a, a huge trouble for white. I think white has must have a lot of regrets not trying to to capture it earlier on when it was much easier. So c3 was played. So he's trying to avoid me from playing bishop a5 because then the he will have a fork. But now I have, I think, an opportunity for a nice developing move, rook c8, hitting this pawn. Rook c1. Yeah, so I really believe that at this point, Black's position should be just winning with the extra pawn. But now comes the technical part where I need to realize my advantage. So first thing that I would like to do, because I have time, white is not uh, threatening anything particular. So I w first of all I would like to create a lift square for my king. I'll play g6. The move g6 is very nice because I create a square which is opposite to his bishop uh, so this g7 square would be very safe for my king. Also putting my pawns on the same color as his bishop make it might much more difficult for this bishop to get active. So I think everything is uh, pointing towards a positive result for black in this game but of course we should not be we should not celebrate just yet. B4 was played. This actually gave me the opportunity to offer the exchange of queens, which I will do. I have I have no problem playing an end game with a pawn up. It's also hitting the knight on f4, so we cannot actually uh, take the pawn on e3 at this point. I'm a bit low on time though, so I think I will have to accelerate my uh, tempo of playing. Once again the pawn on e3 is safe enough because I can play the move bishop b6 at any point. I think I will actually play it right now before he makes the move a5. So yeah, the pawn on e3 is completely safe. I could also first take the queen, but I don't think it matters all that much because even if he chooses to move his queen away and to keep them all on the board, actually his king is much less safe than mine because I have th three defensive units, pawn, uh, pawn defenders, and he only has two. So his king is even more exposed than mine. So I don't even mind playing a, mid a middle game position or should I say just a position with the queens on the board. So h4. I think at this point white is just running out of any useful moves. So here knight d7 would be a very nice option trying to centralize my knight into this nice square. Many good options there. Knight e4 is also not bad. I actually like knight e4 
Let's do it, lad. That's threatening knight f2. I think he has to take this knight. I will probably recapture with the rook because one of my ideas is to pressurize this pawn on c3, which is a very relevant target, being on an open file, a backward pawn. He's thinking, but I really don't see alternatives to taking the knight. The, the threat of knight f2 is, is extremely serious. And also I'm threatening actually to take the pawn on c3. Yes, yeah, so he took it. Let's take with the rook. I really would like to uh, have the option of placing my rook on c4. So for example now, yeah, he took it. So I have no reason to keep my rook on e4 because the bishop is defending this pawn quite adequately. So now knight e2 is the only move which he can protect the, the pawn from. All of his pawns are actually extremely weak. I think they will start falling very soon. Now a5 is a nice option for me. I think I'll do it. So I would be very happy if he took an a5. This will add uh, even more pressure against this pawn. Now also the pawn on a4 starts to be a target. So I think all of his pawns practically are extremely weak and, er, and are potential targets for attack. He wants to attack my pawn on b7, but I will simply, I think, play b6 here, which should safeguard um, my pawns from any kind of potential attacks. The, the pawn is protecting the bishop, the bishop is protecting the pawn. Let's collect another pawn there. You, it does have a plan to come and capture. Hmm. Time is low, that's a bit annoying, but okay, let's capture another pawn. So I'm two pawns up at the moment. I'll try to. I, I can take the pawn on c3, but let's try to maintain the pawn on e3 because that's an important pawn. The nice thing for me that he cannot move his knight from e2 very easily because the pawn on c3 would be hanging with the tempo. I don't see actually too much of uh, useful moves for white here. Objectively, I think he's dead lost, but of course he, he will try to fight on. He's trying to get his rook on the d3 square. Yeah, that's actually fair enough. Yeah, time is running low. I have to try. I have to increase my tempo. Let's play rook e5. Pressure against this pawn. So we are playing actually 10 plus 5, so I have a 5 seconds increment. This is why I'm not too worried about uh, the times here. Yeah, rook d3. This is not even a huge threat because I can take the pawn on d5. I think I will be happy to trade because the pawn on e3 is very difficult to maintain. So um, for me, at this point is just important to safeguard my material advantage he played this move rook b5 defending this pawn 
so I can I, I can actually do a similar thing playing rook to c5 and I can also play rook e4 yeah let's play this move so we are not giving up for this pawn just yet the knight is pinned if the knight ever moves then it will release uh, my pawn it's, it's actually quite difficult for him to make moves here I think rook d4 might be a fair uh, try by him and I think my reaction should be f5 trying to maintain this strong rook on the e4 square I don't see any more uh, tries by him other than rook d4 but I am down to 1 minute and 35 seconds so I should definitely uh, increase my tempo of playing okay okay rook b2 what is the threat what is the threat I'm not sure I'm not, not sure that there is a threat actually but he, maybe he just wants to release his knight to be able to move so maybe he wants to play knight d4 and get his knight active yeah I'm not sure but once again time is so low let's play f5 uh, trying to maintain this rook on e4 so now if he plays the move knight d4 I can simply collect the pawn on d5 e but he actually can play knight to f4 which he might do even though if he plays knight f4 then the pawn on c3 would be not protected anymore so I will have the chance to play maybe rook c4 and putting pressure on this pawn rook c2 what's the idea of this move yeah probably there is nothing I will just act try to activate my king to a slightly more active square there c4 wow I really don't like this move now I can actually can maybe reroute my bishop into a more active square even bishop d2 makes sense to me time time is so low so low yeah okay let's play bishop b4 my bishop will stand on c5 it, it will solve most of my problems regarding the fan it will actually simultaneously protect all of my pawns so uh, it should be a happy sight for me so knight d4 yeah I've kind of anticipated this move but I think I can simply continue with my plan I don't see anything too dangerous yeah you have this check on e6 but I'm not sure how uh, dramatic is this now e2 is actually a big threat there he played rook e2 this hangs the pawn on c4 actually let's let's collect it once again I don't have too much time so I will uh, make decisions quicker at this point so I'm at three pawns up at the moment but he is still trying his best to make things not so easy on me which is what he should do let's play rook a4 I'm not sure even why I just don't want him to activate his rook so we can call it a prophylactic move in a way 18 seconds okay this is quite intense knight f4 I don't see any threat so I want to play this move trying to push my pawn to the g4 square further improving my position
Okay, no fear, G5. You will have one check, but it's only one check. No fear, no fear. Oh, I blundered this one. Yeah, the time, the time situation is um, giving his signs. Fortunately for me, I had three pawns up, so losing one pawn is not, once again, all that dramatic. I think I will seize the chance to exchange one pair of rooks there. I'm threatening rook e1 at this point. My pawn is already very close to promotion. Maybe his best chance is to play knight e3. But actually, no, knight e3. Oh, yeah, there is also rook takes f5 coming. So, okay, let's collect another pawn. Yep, now he can take on c5 and take. Oh, he decided to do it this way. Yeah, but I have a little surprise. Intermediate move, king g6 hitting his rook and my next move is going to be rook d2 and I should be able to exchange all of the pieces and thus actually e winning very easily with the two extra pawns in the pawn endgame so the yeah I, I, I really feel like this game was <laughs> way more let's say in intense than it should have been but at the end of the day Okay, the game is not over, of course, but he, he will he will lose it. I can uh, just exchange all of the pieces there at any given point. So takes b5, king f3, takes everything b4. So I'm trying to calculate whether I'm in time to to push my pawn. Yeah, I should be able to win this. So b4, king e3, b3. Yeah, so he is in time. But I think I will just go and collect the pawn on g4. And this should be an easy win. Okay, let's now let's be precise. I think d5 should do the job. But also b4 should do the job. Let's Let's do d5 just to illustrate one important concept in the end game. I think uh, they call it pants. Yeah, so the king cannot take the pawn on d5 because then I will push my pawn on uh, uh, this square. And now this means I can simply uh, do it this way. Yeah, so he decided to resign. That was a very intense game. Let's take a quick look at it. So I think, um, yeah, I think at some point he, he did something wrong in the opening. I think the move b3 was very unfortunate. Yeah, the evaluation dropped quite significantly when he played this move. He should have just taken an f4. I would play bishop e6. And the position is about equal according to the engines. But after this, as you saw during this game, it was a very difficult task for him to actually get away, g getting back the pawn without uh, any consequences. So I think this was also a very unfortunate move because now I, I just maintained the pawn it was a clear advantage. So the next critical po uh, point in this game, uh, yeah, it was it was all fairly fairly easy. I collected another pawn. Yeah, somewhere around there, I sh I, I think White had one chance of maybe achieving a draw. I, I was a bit afraid of this move actually. 
trying to get a perpetual but engine says I simply have this check and then on the next move I can exchange the rooks yeah so he did this so I never um, lost my advantage um, yes but just to illustrate the last uh, the last uh, part of this game so d5 king e3 so it might seem like if white had one more move to grab the pawn on d5 it would be a draw but thanks to this technique he cannot take the pawn because then the king cannot uh, reach the pawn and uh, in this way the pawns kind of indirectly protect each other and if he tries to do this yeah i'm just getting my king closer and it's a very easy win anyway thank you for watching this very well, I cannot say an easy game, but uh, let's say an, uh, it should have been an easy game, which turned out to be a bit more intense. So, hope you enjoyed this one. See you next time. Bye-bye.